Good afternoon, I'm Keith Silva, in for Judy Simpson. The growing number of microbreweries in Vermont is increasing the demand for locally grown hops. But you don't have to be a commercial brewer to have an interest in hops. For more than 100 years, Vermonters have grown hops for home brewing or as an ornamental vine. To find out more about this hardy plant and how it is used and grown, I'm joined by UVM Extension horticulturist Leonard Perry. Leonard, nice to have you here. Yeah, it's great to be back, Keith. It's a little different for us. We're usually out in the field, but That's right. uh, this is good. Leonard, do you remember when we first met? Uh, no, I don't, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was uh, when you were doing some hops trials uh, back in 1996, I believe. I was trying to remember, but uh, how did you become interested in hops? Okay, actually, I was doing the trial started a bit before that, before okay. you had come. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> but uh, late 80s, when there was an interest uh, coming about with all the microbreweries you mentioned and mm -hmm. uh, the interest in home brewing at the time, not nearly what it is now, but it was kind of reoccurring. Um, there hadn't really been hops grown too much in Vermont for, as you mentioned, mentioned uh, over 100 years. Back in the mid-1800s, it was a really big industry um, in this part of the country, and then it kind of moved west, where it mainly is now, in Washington, Oregon, primarily, um, when people kind of moved west. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there really wasn't any research on how did these new varieties grow and what kind of yields could you get? So I started this research. And being a perennial vine, um, it dies back to the ground. Uh, so that kind of fit in with my perennials, even though commercially it's grown as an agronomic crop. And that's where the research, current research is. Now we'll yeah. take a look at in a bit. Um, I'm sure we, we, we've seen hops, the, the, the cones, but we've probably never seen a hop plant. What do they look like? Okay, it is, as I mentioned, uh, it's a, <clears throat> most people call it a vine, but it actually climbs by twining, which actually makes it a bind. Mm -hmm. And here's an example of the leaves and the cones. These are at the end of the season. These are what you uh, harvest. They're, they're not really cones, but they're, they look kind of like it. They're real kind of uh, papery. Mm -hmm. And that's what you pick and dry and, and use for the brewing. Uh, so it does uh, grow very vigorous. Um, and you can get it, you know, 16, 18 foot in one season, mm -hmm. uh, most of that in the first eight weeks. But this is actually that cone, as we call it, and that little yellow powder, if you will, at the base of these little kind of petals in this cone, um, the lupulin, that's what has any number of chemicals, and that's what's important in the brewing, uh, the main one being that's the beautiful. alpha acids. But uh, when you're brewing beer, uh, that's, you know, where all the good stuff is, right? in those <laughs> little bitty, you know, it's like dust grains. <laughs> um, the golden hops is a variety that, you know, is just a really good ornamental. The hops are ornamental as well. Uh, and as you can see, it growing up, a piece of twine needs to be a heavy-duty twine that it can actually cling on to with these things on the uh, stems and on the leaf petioles. Now, these little barbs are kind of sharp and when you work around them they can scratch your skin and cause a rash so mm. it's that's one of the drawbacks of growing hops <laughs> so it is a vine you mentioned it grows vigorously it needs something to climb on um, what do growers use okay um, there are any number of trails as I mentioned it's very vigorous and so you really need something pretty tall or because it wants to grow maybe 15 16 feet um, wow, here's a yeah. couple versions like they used in the old days um, on the left uh, it's that's really not going to be good past the first year, maybe six to eight foot, but then you need something like on the right, which is, I had uh, tried in one of my trials, you know, just a piece of um, tree, you know, <laughs> limbed mm -hmm. off, yeah. stuck in the ground, and that's what they used to use back in the 1800s, and you can see mm. a person next to it, about five and a half feet, six foot, and um, so you can see how tall they are, and they would take this down and then harvest uh, at the end of the season. So, but now uh, there are any number of things, and these were a couple of different trials, one um, that we had at the time, you see kind of a V-shape with uh, twine going up and the, you have a couple of vines you train to go up each side. Or on the right, at our uh, Hort Farm, we had the trials uh, where the vines went up straight. And when they go up, like I say, um, here's another example uh, where you have like two or three uh, strings or twines and vines going up to this wire across the top. And these were 13-foot posts, mm -hmm. weren't really long enough. The vines got there, <laughs> went out another three or four feet on either <laughs> side, and you see all the cones on that. So this is kind of a basically how the how the hops grow. 
great. Um, that is a lot of hops. You said they just they grow everywhere. It's it's very vigorous. If someone wants to grow hops on a small scale, in addition to a trellis, where do they start? Okay, um, this is the time of the year. That's why it's good to talk about this because you get the roots. You basically go to a homebrew store. You can order them online, but root pieces, you know, big fat roots mm -hmm. and with some buds on it. You plant those. The main thing is you want a good site. So um, some of the things for good site, uh, you want full sun. Um, no, they will grow in part sun, but you know, won't do as well. You need lots of water and a fertile soil. Now, if you don't have a lot of compost, if you use a lot of compost, you can get by with organic fertilizers. Otherwise, um, as you saw from how much they grow, you really need to give them a lot of fertility. I did a story with a, a, a brewer and they had actually put up a lattice on the side of a wall. They, it's called their brickyard, uh, yep. brick wall brew and the hops grew up the lattice. So you don't need the strings. You can, as long as it has something to grab onto, that will right. work. Right, um, you don't need that. You can have any number of things. And um, in fact, um, there's some other uh, versions um, no, we may have pictures of, but um, you can actually have them growing up a post mm -hmm. and a pulley at the top, okay. um, and then you can let them down. You can oh, have neat. strings up to an eave of a house, yeah. um, but some way to get that down um, at the end of the season so you can pick those. And here you see, uh, there is a couple examples okay. of my own hop yard. Yeah. They weren't really that tall, they were like maybe nine foot tall. And so the vines went up and I had strings going from the wire from one side to the other. And um, this is example on the west coast. I mentioned that's where most hops are grown commercially. Mm -hmm. 18, 20 foot out there, just acres of hops. Wow, amazing. Um, if someone's interested in brewing, when are the cones produced and how do you pick them? Okay, uh, as I mentioned, you plant now. The first year you don't get too much harvest. Okay. It's more the second and third years. Um, the vines will grow midsummer. They send out those side shoots. Mm -hmm. Cones are produced on that. And it's end of the summer um, that you want to pick those cones off. Um, and so that's, you know, when they kind of start turning yellow and flare out and uh, kind of uh, papery, uh, that's the time you pick them. Now, uh, as I mentioned, you, the easiest thing is to put the vines down like on a table, invite some friends over, have a cookout, <laughs> and just do that hand picking commercially. You just, you know, uh, can't do that. Uh, out west they have this highly mechanized. I brought just a few pictures to show some okay. of these things we've been talking about. Here is the cone ready to harvest. You see it's kind of flaring out. It's kind of yellowish, um, kind of a papery uh, feel to it into the season. As I mentioned and, and kind of you alluded to, here's some examples at home. Somebody has a tall post. You just drop the pulley and, and the vines come down. I was picking on a ladder on the right, and once you're through picking, um, these make great wreaths, kind of like the grapevine wreaths. Here's a hop vine wreath, a lot of people don't think about, and you can actually use the cones um, to help you sleep, too. They're very soporific. <laughs> <laughs> and they do everything. Hops, they do, they they do, do. everything. Well, the tedious handpicking process has been a significant barrier for commercial hops growers in Vermont. But then UVM Extension stepped in to design and construct a portable hops harvester. We have more from Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollin. You dry hop a beer and you get these wonderful aromas out of it. And Nick Alaria might be a little biased about his favorite beer, but it's for a good reason. Maybe it's because I grew them, but this is one of the best smelling beers I think I've ever popped open. Alaria owns Yellow Dog Hop Yard in Cabot, where he's been growing hops for the past three years. This year, for the first time, he sold them for commercial use. Just kind of started it on a whim. I was getting into home brewing and I heard hops could grow really well up here. And saw some people, uh, you know, snooping around online, saw that they were growing hops up here and having fun with it. So I decided to give it a try. Hops are a vigorous climbing perennial that grow like a vine, up ropes or poles. Each strand is called a vine and can grow over 25 feet tall. The cone-like flowers that go into beer are usually an inch or two long, and there can be hundreds or even thousands on each plant. Hops were traditionally harvested by hand. Alaria and many other hops growers will tell you that can be extremely time consuming. Well, the first year we picked by hand. I got a party of about 10 people up here and we had a bunch of homebrew and barbecue and we just sat on a picnic table up there and picked all weekend long and it took a long time. If you think picking apples is a daunting task, imagine picking hops, you know, it's just, <laughs> they never seem to end and uh, it takes forever to get even a pound. Matt uh, Nadeau shares the pain of being a small scale hop farmer with Alaria. 
Nadeau is the owner and brewmaster at Rock Art Brewery in Morrisville. He has a small hop yard at his own home and enlists his family to help with the harvest. We just pick and pick and pick till you're just tired of it and then, and then we call it good. There are machines that can separate the cones from the binds, but they're expensive and mostly used by large commercial hops growers in the Pacific Northwest. For small-scale growers like Hilaria, there was simply no other choice than to harvest by hand. Until now. This new one-of-a-kind machine developed by the University of Vermont Extension is changing that. We're seeing a much greater demand for locally grown hops to support a booming uh, microbrew and craft brew industry in Vermont and in New England in general. Chris Callahan is an agricultural engineer with UVM Extension. He oversaw the construction of a mechanical hops harvester that saves farmers time and money. It's also portable, which allows it to be a shared resource for this fledgling industry. The hops harvester takes complete binds, which are cut down in the hop yard, and we hook it up to a feed um, at the machine, and the feed draws the bind with leaves and cones on it through the machine, where the leaves and the cones are stripped off of the main central bind. The leaves and cones are then separated on a set of inclined belts we call dribble belts. Um, the cones roll downhill on these inclined belts. The leaves generally stick to the belt and get pulled uphill. And so we're separating as well as stripping the, uh, the plant. Callahan and his team spent the harvest season traveling around the state, helping farmers with their crops. Tell me about the day they came with the harvester. Oh, it was awesome. Uh, that was Labor Day. He came out to our farm. My father and I had cut all the plants off of the trellis the day before. We brought them into the barn. Chris came the next morning, pulled right up to the barn, and we just started firing binds through the machine, and hop cones were flying off every direction. It was, uh, it was quite a sight to behold. What if they hadn't come? I probably would be insane right now, and I probably wouldn't be done picking hops either. Callahan is still refining the design, which is available for download online. Anyone who wants to can build their own harvester and offer feedback for improvements. It is still a very um, labor-intensive process. We've taken it from something that takes an hour per bind to uh, something that takes a minute or less per bind. With help from UVM Extension's mobile hops harvester, this growing industry in Vermont is establishing strong roots. In Alberg, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Well, if you're just joining us, we're talking about home hop harvesting. And the question is, have you ever picked binds and hops, Leonard? Of course, Keith. You know, it's about <laughs> 10 years of research. I picked a lot. I got pretty fast <laughs> at it. But as I tell people, and that uh, show just really showed it well, and as you heard, it takes a while, even with a group of folks. Yeah. I got pretty good at it, but I figured a paper, you know, regular paper grocery bag mm -hmm. took me with some bigger cones, and varieties vary. Some have smaller, some have bigger, but with bigger cones, about an hour mm -hmm. to fill that, and then that would dry down, because you want to dry them down to about a pound. So an hour for a pound of hops and, you know, it's, you know, for commercially that, that just wouldn't cut it, hence the yeah. harvester. But that uh, brings up a good point. You do want to dry these um, right. unless you're going to use them right away, uh, either on screens, a dehydrator, mm -hmm. you know, not too hot, but just forced air to dry them down. And then what we would do oh, is put this. them in these, you know, just regular uh, sealable bags, freezer bags, and put them in the freezer if we weren't going to harvest them. And boy, you can really, I wish we could send that out over yep. the airways, no, really no, smell no, that. Smell a vision, but oh, uh, yeah. nice. but that's just that's nice. you know um, very strong. But these are uh, and these are cascade hops. If people want to grow the hops for brewing, you want to make sure you get the roots of the name varieties because those mm -hmm. you get in just regular pots or grow from seeds or whatever may not be a good name variety um, for for brewing. And these very like these have an alpha content listed when you when you buy them. The acid, the a acid content, one of those ingredients. That's the main thing for the brewing. You've got a couple books here, Leonard. Got about a minute left. Let's 
give folks a heads up on a couple of books you yeah, recommend. People learn more. There's a couple of Homebrewers Garden, which does hops and malt and you know the grains and how to deal with that. And then the Hop Variety Handbook. If you want to learn about all these varieties and all the details and some of those other chemicals and even if you're just not growing but just want to know about these and if you're drinking beer and it says these <laughs> have such and such hops, you know this will tell you about it. So a couple of really inexpensive uh, little paperbacks here, Hop Variety Handbook and a Home Brewer's Garden for more references and of course Excellent. my website which I have a link to the That's Perry's right. Perennials yep. uh, there and just go to the site map and you can see the link for the hops and I uh, also have a link there to the current agronomic work. Well Leonard I'm going to stop us there. Uh, we got some hops. I want to thank you for uh, coming fun. on today and as always thank you for stopping by Across the Fence. Mm -hmm.